And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be lighting up a lot of those Chinese lanterns. We're going to be putting them out on the water, around some boats, around some cool looking platforms, and it's going to light up everything. And what we're doing is putting lanterns to try to gain honor as dedications there. And this is lanterns from Renegade Games and Fox, uh, Fox Rock Games. Uh, it's two to four players and it plays in 30 minutes, ages eight and up. It's a tile laying game with set collection. Let's take a look. In lanterns, you're trying to put on displays of Chinese lanterns to gather these different types of lanterns to then dedicate them for honor. First thing that the tile and the colors of these are beautiful. In earlier videos that I've watched, you couldn't tell how big these tiles are. And in comparison, here's a Carcassonne tile. They're actually quite bigger. They're probably about almost 50% uh, bigger than the Carcassonne tile. So they are quite nice and they're very colorful. Each player starts with three tiles that they will keep hidden from other players. And depending on where you're sitting in location to the board, for example, if we're sitting on this side of the table, we would start the game with one of the red cards in front of us. The person to the left would start with a white, the person opposite us would get black, and the person to the right of us would get blue. So on your turn, the main part of your turn is placing a tile. You can place a tile pretty much anywhere as long as it's adjacent to another tile that's out there. So let's say I place this tile. Now, everyone gets something on every turn most of the time. So when I place this tile, you I notice that you don't have to match anything. Now, what would happen again, just like this one, I would get a red because I'm sitting here. Person to my left would get a green. Person over here would get a blue. Person over here would get a purple. Now, it's very interesting to note that these cards scale depending on the amount of players that's in the game. So these will run out at times. And when they run out, if you're supposed to get one, well, tough luck, you get nothing. And so a different amount of cards of each color are put out depending on the amount of players. Also, a different amount of scoring tiles, which we'll get to later, uh, come out depending on how many people are playing. And after I place that, there's a stack of tiles that I will take one to replace the tile that I did, and it'll be the next player's turn. And once again, the amount of tiles that are out here change uh, because this is sort of the game timer. It will change depending on the amount of players are here as well. So let's say the other players have gone and now it's my turn again. Now I have these three tiles. Anytime you see a tile with a special platform, they do special things. I'll show you that in just a moment. Now I said things don't have to match, but a lot of times you're going to want to match things because if I place this tile here, what first thing we see is this matches this. So even though the player to my right is going to get a black card, I actually also get one too because I matched it. So I would get a black card and I'd get a purple because this is the one that's facing me. So that's how that works. And then this player would get a purple, player over here would get a purple, and player over there would get a black, assuming there's enough left for everybody. Now that's, that's one way to look at how you could play a tile. However, if I played it like this, this is interesting because I match purple, so I get a purple, and I normally would get a purple. So in this case, I would actually get two purples, this person would get a purple, that person would get a purple, that person would get a black. Such a different way to play a tile, and then it would be someone else's turn. Now you're getting all these, uh, all these items. Um, let me go over one more thing, because there's other things you can do on your turn other than play a tile. I'm just kind of showing you how the game works in general. If you play a tile and any of the sides match uh, with a special platform, you get what's called a favor token. You get one of these for each platform that you matched something on. So in this case, not only would I get a purple and a white, and everyone else would get what they normally get, uh, I also get a favor token, and we'll talk about what those do later. So essentially, we've shown you how to lay tiles and what they do. So let's say this is the cards I've got right now, and I've got two favor tokens. Now, I'm the start player here. This just shows you who's the start player. And again, at the beginning of your turn, the first thing you can do is you can trade in any two favor tokens to swap any one of your cards for another one. So at the beginning of my turn, I can turn these in, and let's say I want to swap a, yellow, uh, a, a red for a black. So I would put the red back, I would get a black from the supply, assuming there's enough there, and I have four. The second thing you could do on your turn if you want, these first two things are optional, is you can turn in some of these cards for a dedication. Notice I have four blacks or four of a kind. Now there's three different types of dedications you can do. You can only do one per turn, but in this case, this shows me four of the same kind. So any color that's the same, any four of them, I can turn them in, they go back where other people can get them, and I would take this eight points. Now as you see, as people start to grab these, 
the points are going to sometimes and a lot of times go down. Now, as you see, there's some dots on here because there's different tiles for the for de depending on how many players are there. This shows a rainbow, so if you have one of every of the seven colors, you could make a dedication. Again, you can only do one per turn, but as you see, the color they start to go down. This one is three pairs. So any, any set of three pairs, you can start getting these points. You can start gathering these points over the course of the game. So on your turn, you're possibly turning in some favorite tokens to swap. You're possibly dedicating one thing to get some points for honor. And then you're always placing a tile mandatory and you're picking up one. Once the stack is gone, everybody will finish up and place all the tiles that are in their hand. Then you'll have one more round of just doing the first two possible things in your turn, which is turning in tokens and doing dedications. And then at the end of the game, everybody adds up all the tiles they have in front of them. Whoever has the most points is the winner. All right, now there's lanterns. Uh, now I was interested in this game because of any game that I can find that I think my wife will like and enjoy, I'm always gonna try it because the more games she enjoys, the better because she's not necessarily a gamer. And this seemed to fit that niche, so I got it to check it out. Now typically I'm pretty big on theme. I like to have games that thematically make sense and, and things like that. I mean, this game, even I love the art. I love the idea of uh, kudos to having a different refreshing theme like this, you know, the Chinese lanterns here. But granted, it could have been any theme. It's, it's basically an abstract tile laying game with a set collection mechanism with a pasted on theme. But I'm okay with that because the game is so good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think I like it best with two, and I'll tell you why. Um, because th the nature of the game is great because you've got three tiles to choose from. And this is, maybe they got this out of Tom Vassell's, you know, Carcassonne draw three tile variant that he likes to play. Uh, which I don't, by the way, but anyway, this game, it works. You get three tiles, and by the way, these tiles, they're so much bigger than Carcassonne. They, they look great, they feel great, and you got these tiles, and you try to figure out which way to put them and where to put them. Okay, and with two players, it's enough to keep track of one other player. You can look at your tiles and go, okay, I really need to get this. I'll put this here. This will get him that. Oh, he's really close from getting it. I don't want him to get it. I'll do something else. Or, um, oh, he needs one more blue. Let me get a bunch of blues and take the last one so he can't get some. A lot easier to play aggressively with two players because there's not that much to keep track of. With four, there's too much going on where you really can't, you can try to pay attention and do that, but really you're just gonna be all for yourself. And if you can screw other people, maybe yeah, but it's hard to do with four. It's still enjoyable with four. I'll never turn down a game two, three, or four with this game. I just prefer it with two because it, it's it's much better balanced for screwing, screwing your neighbor and doing stuff that you like. Now this game is really cool because it reminds me a lot of Carcassonne, even though it's completely different. It's relaxing. It's one of those games that you can just play relaxing with your spouse or with someone else that doesn't play games a lot. You can lay tiles, you can collect stuff, you can trade it in with some nice music, Serenity playing in the background. Or just like Carcassonne, you can play very aggressively where you're really screwing your neighbor. So that's why I like this. I think a lot of people are going to be turned on to this because you can play it casually or you can play it very competitively. In both ways, it's very enjoyable. It's hard for you to do that. Very simple mechanics, very simple things you can do in your turn, but there's a decent amount to think about, especially towards the end where you have a lot more options. Three tiles, each of them can be turned four different ways. You got all these tiles up there. There's a lot to think about. By the time it's your turn, especially in a four-player game, you've gotten a bunch more cards from other people. That's another thing I really like, is that you know you're getting everyone's getting something on every turn. So there's even even when it's not your turn on a four-player game, it, there's not a lot of downtime because you're receiving cards and that changes what you're going to do. The only little bad side to that is by the time it's your turn, you've got a different thing in front of you, a different card than you did before. So you can try to plan what you're going to do, but you really won't really know until it's your turn until you get the stuff. And that's a little worse with four players. With two, not a whole lot's gonna change. So again, that's why I like two better, but four is still great. Uh, excellent game, very impressed. Uh, I highly recommend this game. This is up there with, as much as I enjoy Carcassonne, which is huge, I really like this as well, Lanterns. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.